Hello and welcome to episode 24 of Shared Discovery, the show and podcast dedicated to sharing the many exciting and enjoyable aspects of games and gaming. I'm your host, Victor. Today, we're once again joined by Brad. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How you doing, Victor? Oh, I'm doing great. It's good to have you on for two. We got you for two episodes. Oh, it's a rare occurrence. We got a great topic lined up but before we get into that what have you been up to since the last episode well since the last episode i've kind of taken a breather to you know rummage my thoughts see what's my what matters most to me so i can prioritize sure. getting into the this uh this episode here. yeah you don't really have a lot of time it was only yesterday that we did last episode right yeah yeah just yesterday <laughs> same clothes and everything exactly have you been yesterday. so in the last episode we talked about you haven't been had much time to play games but what games have you been playing when you do get time yeah so like i like i mentioned in the last episode if you guys were watching um i'll never stop gaming Gaming is a part of everything I do. I gamify whatever mm -hmm. I come to, even reading. I'm a bit, really big reader. Uh, yeah. I sent you my Goodreads, and sure. I've been having a lot of fun so with that one. There's quite a bit there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I kind of just gamify that, and when you can start to get the score, like I have a score, a score. of reading books. Okay. How can, how can you gamify reading books? Yeah, what books? the heck? But I'm literally addicted to it like I was addicted to WoW. Nice. Um, that's, that's the biggest game that I have is reading, okay. but I have a mobile game called Archero that okay. I play. Um, the only one that I play consistently and regularly is Here to Slay and Dungeons mm -hmm. and Dragons, just because right. that's so. It's such an easy way to connect. Rather than being just to play the the game, it's more of a, a medium to get around the people you enjoy. The so. role playing aspect of it, Absolutely. the socializing aspect of it, and yeah. it's funny that you mentioned Here to Slay because that? that's what we're going to be talking about today. <laughs> like I brought you on, and I was like, okay, what's a perfect game for us to play? Mm -hmm. uh, to talk about, to do a deep dive series on is Here to Slay, because we play that all the time. We've played it so many times over the mm -hmm. years, and it's one of our favorite games, so that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be doing a deep dive series on Here to Slay, and for those of you who haven't watched or have watched, what we're going to do is we're going to do an overview of the game, we're going to give you an overview of how it plays, we're going to teach you the rules teach you how to set up the game. We'll do a little bit of a demo. So we'll play here live on the overhead so camera, good. just so you can see that. We'll do some hands with, uh, we'll do some turns with our hands revealed. We'll do some turns without, okay. just, to, just to play that so they can see it, right? Yeah. And Good intro type. Exactly. Thing. And then what we always do here is like, teach them how to be better, right? <laughs> what are some of the strategies for the game, yeah. right? And then what are some pros and cons? So they can decide if they even want to play the game. I think that's kind of a good, theme for shared discovery in general mm -hmm. we're here to play games and we want to strategize once we figured out the strategy mm -hmm. let's share it we discovered it like, yeah exactly there's no going back from let's, that let's let's share, share this with you yeah. and let's help you discover if you want to even play this I and like it maybe that. add a new game to their collection yeah. right but i got a question for you you know this you know how this goes now i do I've been on the street been a mm -hmm. so i got a cool question for you so you said you like D D. yep have you ever played one shots? Yeah, absolutely. Tell me, what do you like about one shot campaigns? Yeah, so one shots. Um, yeah, just for anybody that doesn't know what a one shot <laughs> is. So, when you play a D and D campaign, it's typically um, over weeks to months before you mm -hmm. get to the final boss and accomplish the goal that you're doing. Whereas in a one shot. You have a board game similar to the one that's right in front of us, where there's an objective that you have to get through in that one sitting. So on the one side, D&D &D is amazing because it allows you to really get into somebody. And as we've seen with uh, TV shows, the character development comes in the later seasons. Sure. Unfortunately, you don't have that with the one shots. So that's a, a piece that's a little bit missing and you have to work a little extra hard to role play. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, my favorite thing about one shots is you can play it with anybody. It's designed to pick up and put down mm -hmm. where you don't have all of the things on life you know weighing you down you can at least put you know an hour or two into this one shot yeah. and it, there's typically multiple ways to play that one shot as long as you get to that end goal exactly so that's, that's one of my favorite parts it's like a short abridged version of D, where the yeah. dm's gonna construct a scenario for you within i'd say like three to six hours yeah that's about two to average. six hours right that range where you can 
meet that goal and you never touch it again. It's yeah. like a cool, like, it's kind of like playing a movie is kind of a way it to is. put it, right? Yeah. Like you have this character, you go do the scenario, you don't touch it again. <laughs> or sometimes you do. We've done that with one like shots. Some... We pick it back up way, way later. Exactly. Like some of your favorite mm -hmm. movies you've probably watched 10 plus times. I mm -hmm. can't really think of any off the top of my head that I've watched 10 plus, but... If with a good one shot, you for may sure. play it like four or five times. But may play it with a different group. Mm -hmm. Might talk about it. But oh yeah. Really sketchy but it's nice. This nice self-contained experience, especially for people that can't keep playing mm -hmm. long, running year-long sessions, right? Yeah, and unfortunately, one of my last campaigns with D and D, it actually ended because he couldn't make enough time. Yep. It's, it's such a commitment to get into D&D. &D. Really um, mm -hmm. And if you have life, family, kids, and all these other things weighing down on you, yeah. it's just, that's what the one shot's made for. Mm -hmm. The people that don't have enough time or really the want to dive into something that's sure. such a commitment. So that's my favorite thing. It's easy to play with whoever you mm -hmm. want and everybody can get enjoyment out of it. It's a really good intro way into D&D. &D. So why really are we talking is. about D&D? &D? This isn't a d &D. We did yeah, the D&D &D episode, that. right? Well, so there's that new game. So why are we talking about, oh, you're Baldur's Gate? <laughs> Listen, they know I've been playing Baldur's Gate. <laughs> yeah. well, the reason why I ask you if you like one shots is because Here to Slay feels a lot like playing a one shot mm -hmm. D&D campaign <laughs> because you're building parties, you're slaying monsters in a really self-contained little, like, it's probably, it depends on the number of players, but 30 minutes to two hours. Yeah. Two hours is really stretching, but I'd say 30 minutes to an hour and a half. Yeah, it says 30 to 60. We've definitely had some pretty We've long We've had some games. long ones, but it's it feels like this really light, simpler version of a D&D &D one shot. So I wanted to get that out of out there and say like this might be the type of game for you if you come from a D&D background right yeah. uh, but we have a disclaimer here at the beginning of the episode right that for those podcast listeners out there and we do this for all of our deep dives we tell them they might be worth coming to visit the YouTube to check uh -huh. out the video component because we're going to be showing you how to set up we're gonna have a lot of visual components, and we're gonna actually demo the games. And it's a vi very visually appealing game. Oh, it's so it's a great. Some app. people might disagree, but we'll just get... like art is subjective, mm -hmm. I, I find most people think that this is a very visually I, pleasing game. Absolutely, I've heard that too. So, okay, what I like to do now, I like to let my co-host read the back of the box, right? Oh, okay. I, you know, the designers took time to craft this. To get you hooked, so t get me hooked. Get them. Whoa, hooked. they even have playable characters you can customize yourself. Mm -hmm. All right, so here to slay. Are you ready to slay? Here to slay is a strategic role-playing fantasy game, <laughs> card game from the creators of Unstable Unicorns. In this game, you'll assemble a full party of heroes and slay dangerous monsters while sabotaging your friends. I mean enemies. Brace yourself for a fast-paced, adorable, and utterly destructive adventure. I gotta ask, can you do that voice the whole episode? I sure can. <laughs> D&D player. My, my throat hurts already. <laughs> but I don't know if I can laugh like that, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> not One Piece characters, okay? So that they made this hook to that, and I think this really sums up what the game's all about. So it's about sabotaging and we're, we're your friends and making enemies and building this party and slaying enemies. Uh, and slaying monsters. So I thought I love reading the back of the box because they yeah. took time to craft this. Yeah, they put time and into that. Took a lot of thought and a lot of time. So let's let's tell you about that. But <laughs> let's get into the overview of the game, right? So okay. we, it's like D and D, but it's not, right? It's it's different game. So how does it play? So it's a free for all style competitive card game in which players assume the role of one of fourteen or. 15. We'll go over that. We'll go over that. Party leader characters, because there are some Kickstarter exclusives. I guess we should say that here. Some of the parts that I have are from the Kickstarter version, mm -hmm. but all of the rules we're going to teach you apply to the base game as well. But you take on the role of a party leader, all with their own unique abilities and classes in order to assemble a, a diverse party of heroes and slay monsters, right? Kind of like D&D. &D. You can't mm -hmm. just have... <clears throat> excuse me. You can't just have five warrior uh, fighters. They'd be fighting That's amongst each other. Yeah. We're doing an all barbarians campaign soon. Oops, all barbarians. <laughs> uh, I'll Oops. let you know how it goes. <laughs> <Oops. All laughs> but you want diversity in your in your group to because to use the strengths of the group. And so the game has the base game. Mm -hmm. It started on Kickstarter, so the Kickstarter version is going to cost more. But you can get the base game online 
30 bucks, something like that, right? Yeah. Pretty cheap. And um, But there's three expansions at this point, and it's probably the end of the expansions, but there's Druids and Warriors, Berserkers and Necromancers, and then a Christmas expansion, which I'm so upset. And I learned about that one recently. I'm I, so I, upset. I have my own copy of this, but it's I have incomplete. The, I have the Christmas one, Yeah. and I didn't bring it for the studio. I messed up. Right, I had one job. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the holiday one is called Here to Slay, spelled like a sled. Slay. <laughs> Santa Slay. And so the disclaimer here is that we're not going to be talking about that holiday episode because it brings in brand new mechanic to the game that change how you win. Okay. So, Which is realistically like kind of changes the whole game when it's you change how to win. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. It changes all the strategies. Um, so it would probably, it would, I'd have to change the show notes. I don't want to do yeah. more work. Yeah, I got, I got Priority is high, as we talked about that <laughs> last episode. Uh, and so the game is designed for two to six players. Okay. And matches last, which we already said, between 30 to an hour and a half. The longest we've had is two hours, and that's like six player game. Yeah, and that's right. when everybody kind of wants to make it go that long because like there's ways to drag this out a little bit mm -hmm. excessively a lot of but it's a lot of fun it is a lot of fun once you, if you like that that's great it's yeah great two hours but i've those longer games have also been for new players while the rules are pretty simple anytime you play with new players it's gonna be a little longer and so now let's talk about the rules how do yeah. they play the game and i think it's important take it tell them how they win yeah so <laughs> It, anytime you get into a game, even if it's the game of life, you want to know how to win that game. Whether I'm going to crack the box while you're talking. Yeah, go yeah. for it. So when you uh, come to Here to Slay, it's very simple. There's only a, a, um, there are only a couple ways to win. The main way that you win is, I, don't, I, I guess I don't want to say the main way that you win. There's two main ways that you win. Getting a diverse party where you have either six different classes if it's the base game and uh, or seven different classes if it's the expansion because mm -hmm. there's more cards in there it's higher likelihood that you're going to get those different classes so they had to change the rules a little bit for the more um the expansions yeah. when they come out and the and expansions that, so. The, so the base game has nine classes and the expansions yeah. opposite to 11. So okay. they moved they shifted that from six to seven to yeah. compensate for that Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So that kind of balances it out on the other end with the other way that you win is by fighting monsters. There's a, a certain party requirement where you need a specific class in order to fight that monster, but every monster is different, the requirement that it takes, and depending on that requirement, once you defeat three monsters, mm -hmm. you win. And it's one of the the surefire the, the surest ways ways to win is to just get those three monsters. Yep. Nobody can affect those monsters. Just mm -hmm. one, two, three turns, and you win yep. if that's the way that you want to go. So yeah, it boils down to two strategies, right? Two things that feel really D and D, right? Yeah. Slay monsters, build a strong party, <laughs> and these two overlap throughout the game too, as you'll see as we go on. But what are the eleven classes? Yeah, game. so the 11 classes that we have, it's very similar to D&D. &D. Um, there's a little bit of overlap, I believe. Um, the first one you have is a fighter, Ooh. guardian, Ooh. ranger, thief, wizard, bard, druid, sorcerer, warrior, berserker, and necromancer. Okay. Okay. And just to <laughs> point out the difference, the necromancer, the berserkers, the warrior and the druid, those are from the expansion. Yes. Um, is it, since we have the visual component, are they able to see this right now? Yeah, they are. So okay. what you can see here on the overhead camera is I laid out all the class. I tried to do it as you do it. I kind of, I was, I lagged a little bit, had a little <laughs> bit of latency here. But what I really like about this game, the aesthetics of it is each of these nine classes is represented by a certain animal type. Mm -hmm. a certain animal group which you can see behind us if you watch on the youtube videos we well. have a lot of figures here right With, uh, on the on the studio here that are characters from this game and so just to go through it the fighters are bears the guardians are unicorns the the rangers are foxes the thieves are cats the uh bunnies Bunnies are wizards. Yeah. Yep. The my personal favorite, the bards are squirrels. I'll let you the take, bards are the best class. I'll I tell love you, them. Man. They're so fun. They have the best yeah. names. <laughs> they do the 
like cheekiest stuff too. They're like, so silly. Uh, next up is we have the Noble Shaman. Mm -hmm. It's a druid, um, and that's a deer. Uh, you have the sorcerers, which are dragons. Mm -hmm. Gotta have dragons. Come Absolutely. On. And I'm pretty sure we don't even have the sorcerers. Um, I'm really? pretty sure that's a, a mm. Kickstarter. It, oh, is it really? I'm, I'm pretty okay. sure. Uh, I don't remember it. But. See, I, I'm glad we're talking about this because I didn't think about the Kickstarter component. Yeah. I just because there's a lot of cards in here that I might not have, and, sure. and and they might not be able to get as well. Yeah, so. but the rules are gonna function the same even if you don't have these Kickstarter cards. Exactly, and it's yeah. the same. It counts as a class. Going back to how you win, you need six or seven. In this case, it would be seven different classes in order to win mm -hmm. it, you can see that you have um, 11 here I believe two four six eight ten eleven yes you have 11 <laughs> here um, and to continue with the last couples you have the warrior which are are those wolves the wolves yes wolves? okay yes. and then you have berserkers which are lions mm -hmm. lions okay and then the last one is you have necromancers, which are hounds. Yeah, doggo. Dog, doggo. Doggo. Puppies. puppies. Yeah. <laughs> and so these are what you're going to do at the beginning of the game. Everyone's going to choose one of these, and this is going to be their party leader for the game. Okay. And you're going to have this the whole game with you, and you're going to get this uh, ability that they have, right? There are a few other Kickstarter exclusive ones. There are a couple of dual classes, a classless party leader, but we don't, we don't need to go into that for, for this base game, right? So, that these are the party leader system, and it's really fun. I like handing it to new players, like to just go pick the animal or the aesthetic that you like the best. Exactly, because we'll, we'll they, don't, they don't know what it is. We'll go from point. there. Let's have some, right. fun, some fun and, and see what they pick. And it's so easy to get people invested in this game because they're like, wow, there's they're dragon. There's cats. I love playing cats. <laughs> I have a cat myself, right? And so the way that the game is actually played, so how do, what is it on a turn-to-turn -turn basis? And it's an action-based action point based game this means that each player on their turn has three points to spend on different actions that they can perform in any order right and there is this handy dandy reference card here that you will have with you throughout the game and on one side it shows how to win so it shows the two things we talked about slaying monsters and getting classes in your party and then it also shows the classes but it's not updated to include the Berserker and the Necro. It doesn't, it doesn't have, have the those. Warrior. It, it does have, have the Warrior and the Druid. Okay, cool. So that, this is a reminder card. It's not perfect, but the actions on this side, these are the actions you can do in the game. So I'll just read that off, right? So you get three actions to spend on your turn, and you can use them to perform actions bef uh, below in any order. So here are the actions. So for one action point, you can draw a card from the deck. You can play a hero, item, or magic card. We'll go over those later. And we'll go over those later. You can roll to use the effect of a hero for two action points. You can attack a monster, and for three action points, you can discard your whole hand and draw five. So what I really like about this is you always you hand these to new players, you hand these to returning players, and you always have this reference of, like, okay, what can I do yeah. on my turn? I've played dozens of times, and I'll still look at this just to make me feel confident yeah, that I'm playing right. That I'm playing right. And it's, just, <laughs> it's a nice, simple visual of how to play the game. Okay, we should talk about the card types now. Okay, right. there's quite a few different so, card okay, types. But it here, boils so. down to, when you're playing, there are cards that require action points, and there are cards that do not require action points. And so, okay. we're gonna. So I'm gonna start here with the cards that require action points, and the most basic kind of card that we've been talking about, right? You want to fill your party up with these heroes, and these numbers are gonna vary if you don't have the Kickstarter. But in the game that I have with the two expansions, there are 99 heroes in the deck. Uh, so there are 11 classes. There are no dual class heroes, but there are nine of each in the deck different kinds of those heroes and they contribute to the main win condition and they have abilities that help you get ahead in the game okay. and, and anytime you use an ability so can we read one of those abilities yeah let's read, a, you, uh, read an ability get an so example going we'll move the party leaders and monsters here so we can see some of these heroes so we have tough teddy here <laughs> he's a, he's a bear he's a fighter and he says four plus each other player with a fighter in their party must discard a card. So what does this four plus mean? 
Well, you see, we got our cool fancy dice mm -hmm. that they come with here, and I absolutely love them and use them anytime I can. Oh, yeah. Um, but basically what a four plus means is a four or higher, and it's important because there's other cards where it's a, uh, you need to get that number or lower. Yeah. Um, it's a very specific situation. I'll get into that in a little bit. But essentially, if I roll a four and a six, that, or I mean a four and a two, that means I got a six that's higher than the four, yeah. and I don't... Un Unfortunately, I don't get to use his ability. And for those of you that are listening, we anytime you play an ability or anytime you you are called to roll, you play a hero, you use an ability, you roll the dice, you roll two six-sided dice. And these are to determine the success of abilities, right? And so we have Shura Kitty here, right? It's a, it's a cat thief. So whenever you look at a card, you'll see the symbol that matches its class. You'll see the number for the threshold for the ability to be successful, nine plus in this case. I play it, I'm gonna roll to see if I can destroy someone else's hero. I was not successful because I rolled four, but if I say I rolled a nine, was successful. These are the backbone of the game. You're trying to fill up your party with a bunch of heroes, as diverse as possible, to help you get advantage and defeat monsters. So the next card type here. Is it still action type that you want to get into? Yep, we're still talking about the card types that require action. So the next okay. card type that requires action point is an item card. Okay. And so, so I, since we just did the roll, let's do the particularly rusty coin next, and then we can mm -hmm. talk about the mask. Absolutely. So okay. it, in of items, there are regular items and cursed items. Okay. Every single item can be attached to anyone's hero. Each hero can only have one item attached to it unless it says otherwise. There are some heroes that have icons down the bottom that say they can have two, but for this, basically every hero can have one item attached to it. Okay. The regular items give a bonus, the cursed ones give a negative effect. And okay. there are reasons why you would play them on other players, there's reasons why you play uh, them on yours. But there's much less of the cursed items in the game. And so this one will also take an action point, and typically what you want to do is make your heroes better at yeah. doing what they do, right? Which is there's some really, really strong abilities mm -hmm. that if you can get that character out, you basically want to use his ability every turn. Oh, yeah. And that's a specific thing. You mm -hmm. don't get the ability to use it multiple times per turn. Yep. Uh, the way that that works is you get to... As soon as you play a card, remember you have three actions. So mm -hmm. if I had a, an entire hand of five cards, I had uh, first action, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Tough Teddy like uh, Victor did earlier. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be able to roll like I did earlier, and unfortunately, I didn't get the, the roll that I needed for to use Tough Teddy's mm -hmm. ability. So what I'm going to do next is I unfortunately can't use anything else with Tough Teddy this turn. Mm -hmm. I can put on a... Um, coin, or I can put on a uh, an item to Tough Teddy, but I can't use his ability since I've already done it. Yeah. Say next turn though, um, if I wanted to use the each each other player with a fighter in their party must discard a card. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty good because as I set up here a little bit, I notice that he has a fighter here. Mm -hmm. It's not the turn I play it, so if I wanted to use that ability, well, I have to use one action, yep. which is kind of a downside. So if you can play another card or another hero instead of using one that's already played. That goes into action economy. You want to make as make the most of your actions as you can, yep. instead of using what's already there and getting a lesser effect from mm -hmm. it. So, oh, and we'll get into strategies a little bit more yeah. deeply here. But what's great about heroes is you play them. As long as someone doesn't destroy them, they stay in your party, and once per turn you can try to use their abilities mm -hmm. again. So th things like these items can help you use them better or give you a bonus if you're unsuccessful. So for example, I'm gonna spend an action point to equip this particularly rusty coin to Tough Teddy. And this says, if you unsuccessfully roll to use the equip hero's effect, you draw a card. Really good, right? Mm -hmm. so and that's, that's really good because if you remember the three actions, one of those actions is to draw. Yep. And one of those actions is to use the ability. Oh yeah. If you don't get to use the ability, well, you still get to draw. So, so there was no way. There's no that's downside really there. Absolutely. So that's those are items. Those are heroes. They each take one action point. The next thing that takes one action point are playing magic cards. Magic, magic cards are one-time powerful effects that uh, cost an action point and will do something just really powerful, right? And so we have a few here. We have Winds of Change. Return an item equipped to any player's hero to their player's hand and then draw a card. Good, boom, get rid of their mm -hmm. item, draw a card. Critical boost says draw three and discard. 
more cards in our hand. Awesome. Captivating spell says plus three to your rolls until end of turn. And what do we say? Rolls are so important. So any bonuses you get to your rolls is huge. Yeah. Huge. So these are one-time effects that you're going to want to use strategically. And the last card type in the game that requires actions are monsters. And these monsters, what, what you'll do is you'll shuffle the monster deck, and there will always be three monsters sitting face yeah, up. Yeah, this guy's so cool. I don't have it in my table. table. <laughs> oh, right. oh, so there are Kickstarter monsters, yeah. too. <laughs> and you can tell that the, like the double requirement over mm -hmm. here. So. Yeah, so when you look at a monster, what you're going to see is it's going to say requirement. And the requirement tells you what kinds of classes and characters you need in your party to be able to even challenge the monster, right? Okay. So for this one, it says it has the bard symbol, the rogue symbol and a gray H. And the gray H just can be represented by any hero in your party. Hero. So I need in my and just party, a quick on that one, does that count as the party leader itself? And your party leader cannot count for that gray H. It has to be a hero. Okay, but if I had a bard party he party leader that could that count for that bard symbol. And I would mm -hmm. have to have a different hero. You would have to have a different hero. Absolutely. Okay. So for example, this first monster here, the Claude Nightmare, requires a bard, which can be your party leader, a rogue, and any hero. So three entities to attack this monster. So anytime you look at these, look for the requirement. When you meet the requirement, you're gonna say, I'm gonna spend two action points to challenge this monster. And each monster will have two thresholds. It'll have a knight a minus threshold and a plus threshold. So the Claude Nightmare says six minus, and then not nine plus. It's typically the plus says, I successfully slayed it. Yeah. Oh, and then and the minus. said typically because it's not always this. Not you always. have to pay attention Read to Read your what cards. It is. Read the cards. And then the negative is typically bad. So this one says sacrifice hero. Yeah. Move a hero from my party to the discard. We don't want that to happen. But anytime you defeat a Part, uh, monster, move it to your party, it stays there forever, and then you get the effect that it says at the bottom, reveal another one, and everyone has access to challenging these monsters. Okay. Okay, so the, those and that's are, kind of important what he said here is because you get the ability for the rest of your rest of the, the game, rest of the game, not the rest of the turn. So let's listen to this one. It says each time you play a magic card, draw a card. Think about if you had a different. We, we haven't gotten to it yet, but one of the um, party leader's ability is each time you play a magic card, draw a card. Mm -hmm. So you can start to see that the synergy between this card. If I had this guy as my leader, if I had uh, the cloaked sage as my leader, well, I would probably be gunning for the the volt claw because. Oh, yeah of how well it plays together so mm -hmm. really pay attention to what's pay down there because to it stacks up so so much it compounds really like compound it's really a very important these abilities can warp the game they really can so those are the four card types that require actions heroes items magic and attacking monsters but there are two card types that don't require actions what are those yeah so my favorite one actually i'll go to my favorite last but the next one since we're still in the the vein of um talking about monsters and how to fight monsters so monsters typically have a higher slay um than other things not necessarily but the better it is if it had an amazing ability you're probably going to need to get like a 10 or an 11 plus yep and that's pretty pretty unlikely because you have to get a five and a six. I think I forgot to say, yeah, you challenge the monster, you roll the dice. We've mentioned yeah. that earlier, but any time there's a threshold, you roll the dice. You're rolling them yeah. constantly throughout the game. <laughs> yeah, and imagine trying to get an 11 or 12. You're probably not even going to challenge mm -hmm. it as much as something that's like a seven. So. Yeah. In order to make it even and try to get the things that are really worth it, but a little bit more difficult, they might say a sacrifice two heroes or something crazy like that. We really want to avoid something like that. And the mm -hmm. card in here, uh, the way that we can avoid that if our rolls just suck because luck is against us sometimes, is what's called a modifier card. And these, you can play it on anybody's rolls. Yep. Um, if he were to try <laughs> to fight this monster and I have a negative card, for example, this negative four here, well, he's going to get it. I don't want him to get it. I'm going to do everything that I can to prevent him to, from getting it. So what I'm going to do is play the mon minus four. What he's going to do is follow it up with a, a plus four. What the other person on the other or around the table, what we're hoping they do mm -hmm. is follow up with like a plus two or a minus two. Or, and these or are whatever. great. These, these really make the game feel super interactive because sometimes you get into these interactions where people, six modifiers yeah. are played, right? And you can, like you said, any dice roll, yours or opponents, you can use them to help them. 
ruin theirs, yeah. get your dice rolls, but these can be anytime. And so like hold think about on it. These. Yeah, and like think about it. If somebody's using something to make somebody with a fighter discard, mm -hmm. if you don't have a fighter and you want that to succeed because they have a fighter and they're gonna win, mm. well you can help somebody else prevent that person from winning. Mm -hmm. It doesn't directly help you win, but that's kinda how keeps it's you free in the game longer. Keeps you in the win. Mm -hmm. So it does help mm -hmm. it kinda does help you win. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but those are modifier cards. Um, pretty straightforward and you can start to stack this pretty crazily. If you wanted to fight something with like a guaranteed, well, you would draw a bunch and make sure that before you even attempt to challenge it, mm -hmm. you either have cards that augment your rolls, mm -hmm. um, or you have heroes that you can use to give you certain advantages to fight sure. that. Yeah, absolutely. These are such fun cards to play. Uh, and you mentioned you kind of led into this a little bit. It's this next card type, and these are called challenges. Can you play this card? Play the vicious wildcat. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to play the vicious wildcat. No, you're not. Challenge. <laughs> so a challenge card says anytime anyone tries to play a hero, item, or magic card, you can play your challenge and try to stop them from doing it. It's important that it says uh, hero, magic, or item, and it's the playing of a card. You can't challenge somebody attacking a monster. It's simply playing mm -hmm. a card. And that tries to stop them. So what will happen, you challenge them, and the two of you will have a roll-off, which means you yeah, both D6s. roll your d6s and compare the results. So I got a 9. OK, let's go ahead and do a roll. <laughs> you I got, got a, a six. 6. So I won, so I get to keep my character. But if you got the 9, I would I wouldn't lose. I'd lose my hero. I'd go to the discard pile. And you mm -hmm. want to keep these challenges around in case someone's trying to win, or they have a really good hero, right? And what I will say about challenges is if there's ever a tie, the person who played the challenge wins the tie. The challenger wins. The challenger wins. And just just to give you a little bit of perspective of how powerful the challenge cards are, it literally prevents people from winning. That's one of the only ways that you can have to stop somebody from winning by playing a card, because if you go back to how you win, you only need a certain number mm -hmm. of hero cards. You have to prevent them from playing that last last hero. So if you don't have a challenge and it's getting really close to the end, yeah. well, you should probably draw to make sure you don't lose. Absolutely. Um, where I was going to go with the uh, Vicious Wildcat, though, in this challenge, the reason why I wanted you to play that is because this is such a strong card. Yeah, what does it say? It's a it's a 12 plus. So if you didn't have any modifiers, Dang. you're going to have to get a perfect roll. Perfect roll. And that's why the modifier plus four, you only need an eight to still mm -hmm. get it. But slay any monster card then end your turn boom just think instantly about how kill powerful it. just that instantly is. kill that i don't even have to there's no downside there's to no even downside. attempting yeah. to do it it's one action mm -hmm. for something that costs two action so think about this if you have three actions mm -hmm. i know i'm getting a little ahead of myself because yeah I'm you're excited, getting into the strategies so we're gonna have to move on to some play here okay. after this yeah so to continue with <laughs> this one real quick mm -hmm. Think about it. If I attack it with my first two actions and I play this and I get to get two monsters in one turn, it's I'm huge, one turn away from strategy. winning. So if I can challenge you and prevent you from doing that. Exactly. Boom. Okay. Well, yeah. Sorry. I That's it. okay. Sorry. You're getting excited. This, okay. See this? We love game. this. We love this game here. <laughs> but that, that wraps it up, right? The challenges, you cannot challenge modifiers. But you can challenge heroes, items, and magic cards. So just remember, as you're playing, there are cards that require actions, which will be on your what to do, it's on your turn card, and there are cards that don't require actions, which will tell you on the card when you can play them. But I think we should do a little bit of demo. So okay. let's teach them how to set up the game. And so what you're going to do is each player is going to pick a party leader. Who's so, well, got good guys? Uh, and while you're doing that... Rage and Manticore? Is that who you're feeling? <laughs> All right, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to play the Cloaked Sage, which on each of your party leaders, you're gonna, they're going to have a static ability, and it's going to tell you the class. So party leader is my party leader is a wizard, and yours is a berserker. Cool. So we picked those. So now, after that, we're going to shuffle the deck, and we're going to deal five cards to each player. So we don't need the whole deck right now, but these, this was pre-shuffled, so... I'll just give you five real quick, and I'll give me five real quick, and you okay. put that in the middle of the table. I'm setting aside extra cards here, and we'll set aside these extra cards as well. And then after that, we shuffle the monster deck, which we already did, and then you flip three of these, because remember, there's always three revealed at a time here. And then... We randomly determine, you determine how you go first in your play group. We usually just roll the 
the dice and see who gets the highest result. I think the rules say youngest, but I think it's, it's, it's a, always it's up to you. Rules. So I got eight. All right. And I got it's five. Okay. So I'm once the turn ahead. order is determined, we just begin. So we're going to do a few turns here with a demo. So on the demo, let's just play with our hands revealed. Um, I have my five cards. Start of my turn happens, I have three action points. So for my turn, I want to play a hero. So that's one action point. It is a rural card. It's a lion oh. berserker. <laughs> berserker. And then it says nine plus, choose a class, return every hero card of that class to the respective player's hand. And this okay. is important because that we just started. Yeah. Nobody has any classes. I can choose not to roll if I don't want to. Okay, that's a very important piece. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to move on. I have two action points left. So I'm going to look at what I have here, and then I'm going to use an action point to draw a card. Okay, cool. I like that. I'm going to save that for later. And then I'm going to draw again, right? Okay. That's my three action points. There's nothing I can do. What else I can do? I'll pass the turn to you. Okay, so... What I'm already looking at to see if I can do, it's, it's not possible right away, but I'm always, my brain thinks of how can I attack. I'm not really going to attack right now, but mm. I have a, a guy that goes for attack, so I'm going to start drawing cards to see if I can, mm. mm -hmm. um, see if there's anything that helps me. Not really, so I've already used one action. I'm going to go ahead and change the order of these so it's clear on camera, um, but I'm just going to play a, a hero, Heavy sure. Bear. Choose a player. That player must uh, discard two cards. Oh, rude. And cards are how you win the game, mm -hmm. so this is a pretty strong card because it's a 5 plus that's pretty easy to get. I got 7, so now he has to discard 2 cards. He gets to choose what those are because it's oh, a discard. Oh man, I don't want to discard 2 cards, so I'm going to modify your roll. Ah, dang, I'm okay. I'm going to give you a minus 3. So I'm going to get okay. you down to 4 so you're not successful. So 5 plus, uh, well, I want him to discard it, so I'm going to give myself that 1 plus. Oh man. Um, so now he actually has you to discard You are successful, you're cards. at a 5. So, man, if I'm going to have to discard two anyway, I might as well use this modifier. Hey, exactly. So, so minus one. one. You can't get the roll. And, uh, well, I unfortunately don't have any more modifiers, so that I don't get to play this guy. Nobody has any other chance to respond. So you do get to keep the card. Remember, it stays in your party. I didn't challenge it. The effect just doesn't happen. Oh, it wasn't mm -hmm. a challenge. It wasn't My a challenge. So that's a good point because whenever you challenge a card, you're challenge, challenging the playing of that card, mm -hmm. not the effect. What I did here was to roll to see if I got the effect. Mm -hmm. So I canceled your effect, but you still keep that hero, which is really important because that counts towards the total count of getting to seven classes represented. Yeah, it's very important because there's still some benefit to this. Mm -hmm. It's not completely dead. Yeah. And for my last one, cards are how you win this game, so I'm going to go ahead and draw another card. Okay. It's pretty cool looking guy. That's awesome. So now it's my turn. You're out of action. So I'm like, okay, I'm looking here. I'm going to take a look at the monsters that are available at the moment. What I'm going to do, I don't want to fight any of those, so I'm going to play a, for one action point, I'm going to play a magic spell. And this magic spell says discard every card in your hand, then draw four. Huh. So... One, two, three, four. But it, my party leader also says each time you play a magic spell, mm. draw a card. So I will draw an additional one. And so I, you're totally going for Volt Claw, huh? <laughs> I, may, I might be. It looks really good. So I look in at my hand, I'm like, wow, I like this hand a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. This look is, at the colors. You already, I know. You're already so much closer to winning because you're too... One one class away from winning at Absolutely. This point. As long as I can get these onto the battlefield. And for those of you that aren't watching, each of these classes is represented by a different color. There's color coordination. So I really like what you said there. It's really easy at a glance to say, oh, I'm close to winning. Yeah. Just by colors alone. And when you're looking at a table, you can see that this person has like, he has a lot of that color. Mm -hmm. She has a lot of that color. Ooh. That's a That's rainbow. A lot of colors. That's a rainbow <laughs> over there. Yeah. Oh no. Okay, so that was my first action, right? I got a new hand. What, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna play something else. So I'm gonna play this Y shield. It is a guardian unicorn with six plus. So I'm gonna roll to see What's if I can ability? get this ability. And if it's successful, which it was, I got an eleven. I have plus three to all of my rolls until the end of my turn. Okay, so I have a challenge card. Here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. At one point at what point do you 
have the ability to challenge because mm. I would want to know whether that ability is even worth it before yeah, you go to yeah, roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Let's... do you have to read the ability as you're playing a card? Yeah, it actually says in the rules here, the challenger, uh, when you can choose to challenge. So when modifying a challenge roll, you must wait until... Oh, hold on. Okay. So each card can only be challenged once, and then... Actually, yeah, because my, my question is, mm. like, do you have to read the ability yeah. off so people know how There's good some that nuance. card is? There's some nuance in Cause this. Because that's how we've been playing mm -hmm. whenever we play. It's like, all right, you have to give everybody a chance to, to, to say Uno before you win the game. Um, uh, kind of same thing here. You have to make sure that the card is actually worth challenging. You can't just be like, challenge. I mean, you, you, <laughs> sure, you sure can, but, I mean... The person playing should give the other players the opportunity to be like, all right, here's okay. what I want to do. Anybody? And then okay. they roll for it. It doesn't say, but I think that's, yeah, giving them a chance to challenge. What it yeah. does say is when modifying, so using modifier cards on a challenge roll, you may wait until both players have rolled before deciding whether or not to modify. So okay. you can see their results. But I think that's good practice, right? I just yeah. sped through that. Yeah. I should have said, okay, here's why shield... Does anyone have any challenges? Here's what the effect does. That's good. That's a good practice. There. You, don't you don't necessarily need to ask, like, is there any Unos? Yeah. Just, just play just it and read the card time. and give them time. Because I didn't give you any time. That's that's good Good practice there, for sure. So, um, do you want to challenge it? No, no, no. Okay, no. okay. <laughs> so I was successful. I have plus three to all of my rolls. So I'm going to play another card. I'm going to play this Ranger that called bullseye mm. it says seven plus look at the top three cards of your deck of the deck add one to your hand then return the rest to the top in any order so wow, i'm getting good rolls why am i wasting my good rolls live yeah <laughs> so i got 11 plus three successful so i will look at the top three Ooh, there's definitely something like true these. to that like there's Boom. definitely like roll karma mm -hmm. you've got I, feel like it. You I feel have, like you have to get good at so that is karma. my turn i used up my three action points by using magic card and playing two heroes, so I'll pass the turn to you. Alrighty, so my favorite thing is always to draw, um, and this is a little, actually, I'm gonna take it back. Uh, I'm gonna strategize a little bit because I noticed this guy has a specific um, requirement in order to be able to fight it. Um, and just because I know how strong that combo is, mm -hmm. it doesn't benefit me as much as it benefits him, <laughs> but I, don't, I absolutely don't want him to get it. What I'm gonna do is uh, in order to fight him, I have to have a hero and I have to discard a magic card. So I don't like this magic card. It says return every equipped item to its respective player's hand. We don't have any items as you can see. Items, yeah. um, so it doesn't matter. I'm gonna discard that and I have the ability to try to fight this guy. And okay. He doesn't, he has a modifier. Don't, we don't know that yet. We wouldn't know that. Though. We would not know that yet. And I got an 11. Um, with an 11, I had to get a plus seven, or a seven or above. So even if you modified it, what are you gonna do, Vic? Vic? Um, well, I know that my minus four doesn't stop you from getting it, so I'm just gonna let you, let you get it. Nice, so each time mm -hmm. I play a magic card, I get to draw a card, and that was three actions. Um, was it three, did I draw first? You did not draw. So I still have my one yep, action. You still have your one action. Cool. And I'm gonna draw. Challenge. And then whenever a monster is defeated, you reveal another one. So there's always three for the table to challenge, right? But I think this is a good stopping point. This is a good point to show how the game's going to flow. Yeah, we've seen most right? of the mechanics. So you, you see, yeah. we, we saw that you now have a monster that you've slayed. Two more, you win. We see that I have I've played some heroes, and I'm up to four unique classes, and three more, and I win. So you can see how this loops around back and forth in the game. And as you're playing, you're, you don't have to play with your hands revealed, and you'll keep that as Yeah, absolutely not. Nobody ever sees. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not supposed to let people yeah. see your hands. We're just doing this for the camera. So that uh, was just so a nice little video. Yeah, a nice little <laughs> demo of how, how the game is structured, and you'll keep looping around like that, right? But I think now that we've demoed the game and we've ta been talking about some strategies throughout, let's let's touch on those strategies before we move into the pros and cons. Of the Ooh, game. okay. So what strategy is your favorite? Right okay. Top? So I think just to say out of out of the gate, all strategies revolve around these two win conditions, right? All strategies 
take advantage, try to maximize your ability to kill monsters or get heroes. Okay. Right? So what I like to think of and tell new players is like, I don't know what to do. Just look at your party leader first. Mm. Your okay. party leader often has an ability that will guide how you're, you're playing the game. That's interesting. I didn't even think about it, but that's what I did immediately. Mm -hmm. I was like, I know that this is a slay monster, so I'm, I'm looking to slay monster. And actually, I missed an important piece there. That's why you have to read all your cards every time you're doing everything. Um, this guy's benefit was each time you slay a monster card, draw two cards. Yeah. So since I got that uh, monster card, I was able to draw two more cards, which puts me so much further ahead mm -hmm. in most situations than uh, Vic Victor was at that day. Yeah, absolutely. And so mine guided me too. It says each time you play a magic card, draw a card. So I'm looking for things that do the same thing or I'm looking to get more magic cards so I'm flowing through the deck, yeah. seeing more cards as I play. So for new players, if you're like, I don't know what to do on my turns, just go to these guys. They, they might, might guide you. Um, so the next thing, I think we'll skip ahead to draw. Draw, 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 draw a bunch of cards. <laughs> How do you win the game? The main yeah. resource is cards. So try to find ways to draw. You have the action point to draw one, and a lot of heroes allow you to draw multiple cards. And it's kind of funny, because anytime you get a new player, they're de they just default to drawing cards. And it's, it's interesting. The people that have all these different strategies and mm -hmm. want to try different things, the person that just draws the most is usually the person that wins. Mm -hmm. Oh, it, it really is, because you see more cards, you see more options, right? So it, you can stockpile, like a common strategy is stockpiling things. Stockpile modifiers to protect your yeah. attacks uh, and your own heroes. Stockpile a bunch of heroes so you can play them all in sequ sequential order and stop them, right? Get a bunch of challenge. There's a guy called Challenge Bear over mm -hmm. there. If you challenge somebody, you get extra higher roles for your challenge. Mm -hmm. So you could just be the gatekeeper for everybody trying to win in that game. It's and I'm sure people are like, duh, draw cards. But it's like, come on. It, it, like, it's kind of, see, and it's obvious, but it's one of those things that's so up. obvious. You're not really paying attention to it because you only have three actions. Mm -hmm. Well, you know that you want to draw cards. The way that you go about drawing that card is really important because other heroes augment other heroes. Yeah. So there's ways to just draw three cards every turn, or you can draw like like ten. I don't mm -hmm. know what the top. That'd be a fun one to dive into to see what the combo <laughs> we'll have to is. See. But uh, yeah, it, it's really about trying to maximize. And the, you were the draws. we were talking about this earlier, right? Action economy, and you'll hear this in D and D a lot. D&D has few actions, so you want to do things that get you more advantage than just the one action. A common mm. spell is like Grease. Like wizards okay. have a Grease spell that they drop down on multiple things. It costs one action, but it knocks down four players. Yeah. That's really effective, and it keeps affecting the battlefield for a while. Yeah. So think about that in this terms, too. Like, you could spend one action point to draw one card, one for one, but look for heroes that say, okay, draw three. Or there's heroes that say, draw up to seven. So oh, you that's, fill the, up that's your hand. the best. If you have one right. card, you play that, and you get to draw six for one action. Oh, boy. Oh, it feels so good, it really right? Does. And then sometimes you just have to take advantage of that three action point thing that says discard your hand, draw five. Sometimes it's OK to just fully reset. Mm -hmm. Just see five brand new cards. And think about it. If somebody's about to win, I have no way to prevent them from winning, and they're next. I, I, I just mm -hmm. know that they're going to win. No modifiers in my hand, no challengers, nothing like that. I don't want to lose. I'm going to just discard everything on my last I'm action. I'm going to look for something. I, I'm going to, I'm, magic and card games we call this digging for an answer. Yeah. We're going to dig for an answer. And that's <laughs> totally something you can do. Because if you're still in the game, you still have a chance to win. Yeah. Right? So draw, 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 draw. Try to find ways to make it even better. And something I put here next is just play your heroes as you have them. And see, this is one when mm -hmm. I was reading it, I wasn't really sure how to implement this strategy because a lot of times I'll end up with the same classes mm -hmm. that I'm like, I don't want to overlap on the class mm -hmm. because the way that we win is by different classes. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one that you're going to have to kind of explain the benefit for playing it yeah. right away versus holding on to it and hoping that somebody just doesn't kill my fighter and I have a, a new fighter mm -hmm. to replace it. So can you go into that? I, I like this strategy of just flooding the board with multiple of a class because sometimes I've been so close to winning before yeah. where and they just get an effect that says destroy all fighters <laughs> yeah. or destroy one of each person's party 
party leader. Like, the yeah. Destroy All Fighters is the antithesis of what we're saying, but destroy one hero in everyone's party. I'm like, yeah. uh. And so I've had two out, and that has actually cushioned me. Okay. They yeah. destroy it. It's like it. a buffer. It's a buffer, so next turn, I have an extra action point where I don't have to play it. So I understand what you're saying of like hiding that information, but sometimes there's a benefit of just getting it out and it's like, try it, you have to remove two now. And that's a good point mm -hmm. because there's the thieves in there that can take your cards. Mm. So if you really love this fighter, yeah. you don't want to see that fighter go. Mm -hmm. You might put down extra cards just to make it seem less attractive mm -hmm. to somebody that's going for bards or something yeah, like that. Exactly. So uh, this is something that I found has been successful for me, but sometimes you're right, it's, oh, it's better to hide the information. You just have to weigh what abilities are on the battlefield. And that kind of goes back to the stockpile of your cards, though. Mm -hmm. So you've got to determine if you're stockpiling heroes for this mm -hmm. situation, you're stockpiling modifiers or challengers, or can't really. I feel like you can't really stockpile magic cards, mm. though. Uh, it's hard. The deck's kind of limited with magic cards, but yeah, it's if you, you can, can do it, it, you can hold it. But yeah. That just comes back to drawing as many cards as possible. Yeah. So the next one is political. We had our politics episode of like using your words for advantage, yeah. and a big thing in this game is shifting the focus. Like, oh, it absolutely. I, I was like, like what do you mean by that? Look at them, not me. Not me. It really no, is. They. It's like a, you have to be good with your words and like why you shouldn't attack me. Look at how oh, close to on. winning that person did is. Did you see like, what they did to you? Don't you remember four <laughs> turns ago? Yes, yes. Uh, and yeah. so really re think about these mind games. Think about you using your words because especially this is really important in games where you have limited amount of action because yeah. it can become an extra action for you. It can save you from ha having to replay a class if they hmm. use destroy that. And, Right? I, now I don't have to play my druid again because yeah, yeah. I destroyed Mitch's instead of mine. <laughs> this is great. Um, yeah. Next he's thing. He's got another one, though. He's got another one. The next thing I will say is challenge monsters. And the reason I put this here is because there's been many people, oh, the game will end when someone plays a monster and they'll be like, well, I had a challenge in here. Yeah. It's like, you could have played. How long yeah. have you had that? Like five turns? Don't be afraid to challenge them. Try to prevent your play. Players from it's kind of interesting when I played the mana court to just show how powerful monsters are. Mm -hmm. I really there's so many nuggets in mm -hmm. this podcast here of how to like be really great at this game. Mm -hmm. I'm interested to see which one people gravitate towards. Is it going to be the monsters that they uh, uh, love the most, yeah. or do they find that playing a specific set of heroes is where they find their enjoyment? Oh, Absolutely, it's a lot of it is really interesting. So the next thing I would say, and you mentioned this earlier too, is try to win second. Mm -hmm. And this is a concept in multiplayer games across the board, but the, this is the idea of someone tried to win, people spent all their resources, so challenges or modifiers on them, I could just win real easy now. Smooth sailing, time to go, F yeah, find yeah. that window. You don't want to try to win unless you got it. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, the, the next person that goes is winning because they're all going to play their modifiers mm -hmm. to prevent you from w winning. So if you get the neighbor to your right or left, however ordered house rules is, if you get that person to blow the, blow everything they got and, well, nobody can challenge you, nobody can modify it, mm -hmm. it's like a default win at that point. It is. Like, it really is. And that's a, it's as old as competitive card games. Yeah. Okay, you used all your removal on them. My time to shine. Yeah. The last thing I'll put here is monsters are OP. Yeah, they are. Challenge monsters if you feel like you're not getting ahead. Because once you have a monster defeated in your party, no one, there are no cards in the game that can interact with them or take them away from you. Okay, so like the heroes, we can, there's cards to destroy, discard, mm -hmm. sacrifice, um, I don't know if there's any other way to destroy a hero, but you're saying with a monster, once I slay it, there's no cards no to do one. that? No one can take them, no one can destroy them. They are there, you have them until the game ends. Mm -hmm. So if you feel like you're stuck, you want the safe bet, some monsters are hard to challenge, but if you want the safe bet, challenge monsters. Yep. So those are their strategies. Those are the cons. Try those out as you're playing the game. But I'm going to go through the pros. We're at the bottom of the hour. So I want to give some pros to playing the game, and we'll let you take on some of the cons here. So pros. We've talked about a lot of these throughout, so we don't need to linger too long. <laughs> but flavors and, and aesthetics, right? It feels like a mini D&D. &D. You're building yeah. a party. The art style is great, right? It's so fun. Like, everyone that I play with is like, okay, they pick their favorite class because yeah. of the animal that it is. Like, I love 
the bards because they love the squirrels, right? Yeah. They're so funny. And some people just love the warriors because the wolves. The wolves cool. are cool, yeah. right? So there's all, there's something there to attach to. It's a good gateway game, meaning that it's easy to pick up, easy to get started, and it's easy to teach people that may have not have played a lot of games. Mm -hmm. The strategy, it's good for new players to start learning game strategies. Mm -hmm. If they're like, I want to get into games, it's not an overly complex game, but there's enough depth to start saying, okay, drawing cards, resource management, action economy, these are concepts that are going to apply to a lot of games. I can start learning strategies. Just something on that note, it's kind of a cool overlap, is the way that strategy works is you have to know how to win the game mm -hmm. there's only two ways to yep. win this game mm -hmm. so you strategize entirely around that you're trying to optimize those too yeah. absolutely and what i like i put this here as a pro the game is going to end the way that is designed there is inertia that since the monsters can't be interacted with once they're defeated there's no board wipes that just reset the table there's no repeatable remove Which on the boom, 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 boom. Like, you'll put like turns and turns into this and, and just wipe everything. Yeah. Right. And so the removal is unreliable because it's dice, it's chance based. So the game just naturally builds to an mm -hmm. end. It's not going to go forever. Action points are great because you always feel like you can do something on your turn. Yep. I like that system. When in doubt, just draw. Mm -hmm. And we've already talked about this. It's a highly, highly social game, highly interactive. You can forge alliances. You can steal other people's characters. You can peek at hands. You can sabotage people. Highly interactive if you're into these super social games. And then lastly, the randomness adds for a huge replay value. You're going to see something yeah. different each time you play. Yeah, and the sabotage thing, one of the best things of how there's a lot of replayability, mm -hmm. once you start playing with the same groups, you get to see how those type of people like yeah. to play their cards, and mm -hmm. you get to interact and counter them in a little bit different ways. You remember who sabotaged mm -hmm. you that one time. Which we call around here meta grudges. <laughs> <laughs> Ron meta came grudges. up with that term, right? I like it. It's outside of that current Absolutely. Game. So what are the cons? Right up on, take None. us through some of the cons. Okay, cool. <laughs> good show, good show. <laughs> yeah, so the cons, uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, I don't think this is a con, but some people don't like the, the art. It's um, like some people don't like the Borderlands mm -hmm. style art. Some people don't like pastel art. Sure. For whatever reason, I've heard from people that they think the art is too cutesy. I've heard that too. I can see it because if you look at them, they, are, they, they have way more soft edges than yeah. hard edges. So I can definitely see how that's a big one. Everyone has their preference, you know, and that's totally fine. But yeah. I've, I know people are like, it, well, it was a turn off for me. So. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm not going to be that guy because the gameplay is amazing. One of mm -hmm. our friends, Mitch, he, um, he, he said he didn't really like the, the art style, but he played it for the game. The game kept him there. The game's absolutely. a great game. Um, moving on to another con is strategy. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to play this game, but there's only two main ways to win. Mm -hmm. So there is a limited way, um, a limited number of ways to strategize. Mm -hmm. Once a game is figured out, you can't really figure it out again. And this game has a very limited amount of mm -hmm. that built into it. So that's a yeah. big down compared to actual D&D where mm -hmm. there's infinite. Yeah, and some seasoned gamers might be like, there, it's kind of shallow. Yeah. But that's why I said it's really good for intro gamers. Yeah. Um, I'll just speed run these because we got like, we're at the bottom of the hour. It was but, a fun one. We took a little Yeah, while. We, we got into it. It's great. <laughs> yeah. um, the action point system, while you feel like you have something to do every turn, some people feel like they don't have a lot to do, especially since you can't get more actions in the game. Sometimes that can make players feel stuck. The interaction can also be a con <laughs> if you're mm. like some highly competitive people or the high amount of sabotage in the game can make people salty. Yeah. And also some people complain about the randomness as well, where it, sometimes it just feels difficult to be able to execute on plans. So think about the Cloak Sage. Every time I play a magic card, I draw a card. I'm not always going to get magic cards because the deck's so huge. That randomness one can mm -hmm. lose you the entire game. Absolutely. So that that wraps it up. Hey, we Good did it. Episode. Well, go ahead and I, play the game. Yes, I really want... Yeah, if you try it, if you've tried this game, please let us know. Like, We'd love to hear what your favorite heroes, uh, your party leaders are. We're always arguing which one's the best. <laughs> we think we're going to make a tier list here It changes soon. every week, I swear. You, 
ask us any questions about the game, and you can contact us at shareddiscoveryshow at gmail.com. Uh, please send us those questions. We'd love to read them off on air. And again, thank you to BCTV for allowing us to put on this production. Awesome and so wonderful of you. And before we go, we're going to sign off. So uh, as we leave episode 24, make sure you play some games, have some fun, and be just be kind to others. So I'm going to let you sign it off. Take them away, Brian. Yeah, absolutely. We love to hear from you. Let Victor know how this was. And remember, there's always another step. Appreciate the journey. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having us. Bye.